Do you have a paranormal encounter you'd like to share with us? Send us an email with your story for a chance of it being featured on Weird World. It has been around eight years since my grandma, who lived to be 99 years old, passed away. Even now in my 40s, I've never felt as close to another person as I did with her. During the time of her decline, my wife was about two months pregnant with our first child. I was devastated at the prospect of my grandma not being able to meet my newborn. I was also living in another part of the country, having just started a new job, and my mother informed me that my grandma was suffering from severe dementia. She suggested that I stay home to handle my responsibilities to my wife, an unborn child, rather than travelling to see her in her current state. So, despite my longing to see my grandma one last time, I ultimately made the decision to stay home with my pregnant wife. My grandma hung on for a few more months before passing, and our son was born a few months later. It is worth noting that our son has distinctive piercing blue eyes and platinum blonde hair, a detail that would become significant later on in the story. Approximately six months after my grandma's passing, I found myself in my son's bedroom one night, attempting to help him to fall asleep. As I stood by his crib, he suddenly turned his head upwards, seemingly startled, and began laughing uncontrollably, as if something had greatly amused him. I followed his gaze to the corner of the ceiling, and there was nothing there, just a blank wall. The next night, the same bizarre episode repeated itself, but on this occasion, I brought my wife in to witness it. It was at that moment when my wife informed me that our son had been exhibiting this same strange behaviour multiple times a day throughout the week while I was at work. However, what was most unsettling about it was that not only had it become a regular occurrence, but it was clear that he was seeing something that we could not. Several months later, my mother came to visit. During that evening, as she was assisting me with getting my son ready for bed, we began discussing my grandma's final days and how her dementia had steadily worsened. However, we soon both began to reflect on a particular day during this period when something my grandmother had done had caught my mum's attention. My mum shared with me an interesting story from one of her visits with my grandma. On this particular day, my grandma was in bed, her feet moving excitedly back and forth under the covers, a broad smile on her face. It was the first time in about a month that she seemed like her old self in a conversation with my mum. My mum remarked on my grandma's joyful demeanour and asked her what had put her in such a good mood. My grandmother told her that a friend had come to visit her again. My mum inquired as to the identity of this friend and my grandmother responded that it was the boy with the penguins. My mum asked if it was a boy visiting someone in the nursing home, to which my grandmother replied, No, he lives in there. And she pointed to the upper corner of the room near the ceiling. My mum, humouring my grandmother, asked what this boy looked like. My grandmother replied, He has blue eyes and white blonde hair. He's going to visit me every day now. I was completely taken aback by this revelation. My mum went on to tell me that from that day forward, is all my grandma talked about every single day until the day she had passed away. She looked forward to visits from a blonde-haired, blue-eyed boy with penguin friends who lived on a tropical island inside the wall. It was a constant topic of conversation for her. I shared with my mum about my son's strange behaviour of laughing and looking up at the ceiling. We were both stunned by the coincidence and I asked her if she had any idea about the significance of the penguins. However, neither of us had any information on this peculiar detail. At this point, I was inclined to believe that there was some sort of spiritual connection between my grandma and son. However, the logical part of me couldn't help but consider the possibility that my grandma's dementia might have played a role in her fanciful stories, and in addition, that it was not uncommon for babies to exhibit this kind of strange imaginative behaviour. Furthermore, the idea of penguins and tropical islands being involved seemed far-fetched and hard to reconcile. However, there was another element to the story that I couldn't ignore. Years later, when my son was around four and a half, he began talking about a place called Crydedon, which he claimed to have lived in before he was born. 
He described it as a planet that was not located near Earth and where people had the ability to fly and animals could speak. He would talk about what had done every day, providing many intricate descriptions about this imaginary world. And I was pleased to see that he had such a vivid and active imagination. I'd completely forgotten about the penguins by this point. One day, while looking through an old photo album, I came across a picture of my grandma. I called my son over to show him the photo and asked if he recognised her. To my surprise, he responded, I know her. She's my friend from Crytodon. My hair stood on end and I asked him to tell me more about her. He said, she came over and ate pineapples with me and my penguins on my island when I lived there. As the memories of my mum's story came flooding back to me, I couldn't hold back my tears. It seemed highly unlikely that all these connections were merely coincidental. I didn't know exactly what it all meant, but I was grateful for the opportunity to share it with someone. Over the years, my son drew hundreds of pictures of Crytodon, which I've saved in a binder. As mentioned earlier, he would talk about it for hours on a daily basis, and he did so until he was around six years old. Eventually, on one particular day, he asked me if I remembered living there, to which I replied, no. He then told me, we've travelled together for a very long time. When I asked him how long, he said, longer than people can count. He also claimed that it had once been my father a long time ago. These days, my son, who is now seven years old, rarely mentions Crytodon. If I ask him about it, he would acknowledge that he remembers it, but he no longer provides the level of detail that he once did. 